time. Welcome everybody, once again to Sullen's completely sound, completely professional, and 100% approved by every medical body, Sullen's professional medical advice. Today's medical advice, as you may be able to tell from my own slightly off voice, is to do with sore throats, which I'm currently suffering from. The fact that I've decided to do a bunch of talking now for our tea time is irrelevant. In for today's tea to help promote a healthy throat to use in the uh, articulation of sounds and vocals is chamomile tea. Chamomile tea promotes restorative sleep, helps fight infection, soothes sore throat pain, and wards off zombie infection. For today's very brand of chamomile tea, I shall be trying a chamomile, vanilla, and manuka honey tea, a soothing dip in, on a, in an organic pool of calm. In the midst of chaos and clutter, there's a pool that's still, oh, finding your way there is easy. Fresh water and heat awaken the magic of nature's finest gifts. Silky golden chamomile, exotic vanilla pollard, the, the golden balm of manuka honey. With a sip, stillness takes over. That stillness is not death, just to reassure you. <clears throat> oh gosh, um, trying to do a medical advice, the long-awaited return of it whilst having a sore throat is both probably not a good idea in the fact that I've got a sore throat to even be doing a tea time in the first place, but at the same time it was uh, very relevant to do so because I do have a sore throat, so talking about a tea that does actually help with sore throat, such as chamomile, is a good one to go with. Once again, the same teas usually tend to pop up when you look for teas which are good for sort of like when you're ill, bloated, or have sore throats. Because once again, I saw a lot of peppermint tea and it's like, look, stop trying to force mint tea down my throat. I mean, I haven't tried the peppermint one, I don't believe. So, you know, the last one I had was streaming. In any case, in any case, let's actually uh, move on to the subject of today's tea time. And this was a subject that I've had some recommendation for. Um, but I don't really have much of a clear idea in terms of what I'm going to be talking about in regards to it because it's not one I have much ground to cover. In any case, here is today's tea time on horror games. I'm kind of unsure what to call it. Ho a horror happenstance, spooky speaking, um, who knows, I'll figure it out later as I usually do. In any case, for horror games I've played and enjoyed, I have played and enjoyed Project Zero Maiden of Black Water, an amazing, fantastic horror game that I loved a bit. That's the end of the tea time, okay. Okay, so I do have more to talk about the subject, but as from what I've just said, basically when it comes to horror games, I've only really sort of gotten into one. You know, there's only one that's you know truly gripped me, and one that I've actually dove into playing. That being Project Zero: Made in the Black Water. But it was an interesting thing that I ended up uh, thinking about when I was actually looking back through games uh, that I've played, and it made me think what actually counts as a horror game rather than horror themed, like. Project Zero Made in the Black Water has a sense of fear to it. There's, you know, you're constantly attacked by ghosts, you're in a more disadvantaged position, because after all, your only weapon is a camera. Um, and, you know, that game, you know, from the atmosphere, the sort of tone of it all, the way it sets out, is one that is truly a horror game, in my opinion. You know, it, make, it does have a, you know, give you a sense of fear. That said, you know, there are plenty of games which have horror aspects to them, uh, for instance, as I was going back through games I've played before, I thought, well, let's see, House of the Dead features zombies sort of jumping out at you. You know, you're constantly being, you're having your life endangered. And I thought, does that count it as a horror game? I mean, it's a rail shooter, the House of the Dead series, first and foremost, because that's its gameplay style. But because of its thematics and because the is, you know, for people who are scared of zombies or are scared of, you know, being sort of mowed down by a swarm of enemies constantly lunging at you, and of the difficulty and the looming danger of it all, does that in turn count as a horror game? But on that same sort of basis, you know, if a horror is simply giving you a sense of fear, well, a sense of fear can be developed from a lot of things. One of the key fears that people suffer from is, and in a broader term, a fear of losing, a fear of failure. But games, by their nature of being a case of, of reward for winning and, you know, Failure for losing, obviously, is, um, you know, failure comes as naturally part of it. So do all games have that horror fear of wanting to ensure that you don't actually lose at the game? 
But again, in that case, wouldn't the case of if a game is scary all depend on the person playing it? After all, we're all scared of different things. I myself have a slight fear of escalators, which is something that very few people have. But, you know, it's, you know, something that does scare me. You know, and, uh, for instance, another horror game, Until Dawn, brought up the uh, fact of, you know, what scares you more, a scarecrow or a clown, you know, like little psychological things. It's like, honestly, neither one really scares me. I mean, you can make them scary how you sort of design them, in a sense. You can make them more horrific, but at the same time, you could do that with lots of things. Like, the base idea of a scarecrow or a clown isn't scary, it's more how you're depicting that scarecrow or a clown, in that sense. Though, again, I don't mind either one. And, you know, you know, it was really a matter of sort of thinking about what counts as a horror game. What also particularly struck me is a game that I thought was horror because it had a creepy atmosphere, very isolated feeling with rather disturbing enemies. You had to fight them off with almost survival horror tactics of, you know, really sort of flimsy weapons sort of thing. Like, you know, you picked up like an average sort of stick or a pipe or sort of thing. And you're not really like, oh, you found yourself a sword or a gun or anything, you know. And even when you did find a sort of projectile weapon, it was very limited in how much ammo you had for it. And that was, although I only played for a brief bit, Fragile Dreams, Farewell Ruins of the Moon. By the way, that's not because I didn't enjoy it. I really actually enjoyed what I played of this game, even if I only played, like, maybe, you know, the first tenth, first eighth of the game. Um, you know, I ended up stopping because of uh, time and other games coming out at the time. But Fragile Dreams, Farewell Ruins of the Moon on the Wii, I thought was a survival horror game. In fact, it even includes fear on the back of it. Seven rated. Includes fear as a category, and actually, that, you know, that's actually a pretty good recommendation. You know, I would consider this a horror game because it is really creepy and disturbing in an isolated atmosphere, kind of a like post apocalyptic thing. But not sort of like Fallout where there's explosions everywhere, there's instead ghosts and really creepy sort of little like hands, you know, things coming out of a glass window sort of thing. You know, it makes me think of a horror game. And yet, you know, you, of course, Wikipedia isn't the most reliable article, but going up to it, apparently they just list it as role playing. They're, you know, they don't seem to consider it a horror game. And yet, in an atmospheric sense, I think it perfectly suits being considered a horror game. In fact, as I just noted, a horror game sued for children because it says it's only 7 rated. And, you know, it's a, it's a real case, you know, sort of like how people say that, you know, the Resident Evil series, they ended up straying from their horror roots, you know. Um, as they sort of went further along, they went from the horror gameplay style of Resident Evil 1 to 3 to a more of an action game with the later entries, particularly with Resident Evil 5 and 6. I will admit that that also depends on, you know, kind of a sense of fear itself, but I can certainly see how stuff like Resident Evil 6 introduced, you know, Resident Evil 5 and 6 having a cop mechanic would noticeably drop down the horror aspect to it. And the horror is less, you know, what it's building in terms of the atmosphere as such, but rather what it's doing in terms of, you know, can you win or not? So basically it becomes a matter of just the horror of difficulty again, the horror of failure. Whereas, although I didn't really enjoy Resident Evil 4, it's not my sort of game per se, and back when I was playing it, I was kind of... It's more a case, you know, my previous attempts of horror games uh, is more of a case that I wasn't a fan of the gore aspect of them. It's kind of weird that I didn't mind House of the Dead, but... I don't know, Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 4 where I played, I wasn't a particularly fan of, and I felt a lot of the fear was more in the gore aspect. Though, of course, looking back on it, I do recognise some horrific aspects of it. Resident Evil 4, in that brief moment where you have to survive in that town for as long as possible, and when you hear the sound of that chainsaw guy, you know, those are effective usage of horror elements. I didn't really recognise them at the time, again, I was pretty young, and it was, you know, just, you know, I wasn't as diverse in terms of my, uh, what games I was playing. That's possibly a tea time for another day, though I feel I've already covered it slightly before. But, so back then, you know, trying to get me to be appealed in both a third-person shooter and a horror game, two genres that I wasn't, didn't have really any attachment to, you know, it wasn't ever going to work. But, you know, I can recognise that there were aspects that would, could be defined as a horror aspect, obviously, uh, within, like, opening Resident Evil 4. You know, it manages to capture that sort of perfect middle ground of being both a horror game and being an action game. Because there's a lot of moments where you can plough through enemies. And at the same time, though, whilst you do have a decent amount, you still have to be careful of how much ammunition and such you got, you know, survival aspects, as well as also being careful, as there are well, also lots of sort of moments where you do have a sense of powerlessness. You know, being swarmed by all those enemies and with a chainsaw guy who can mow you down really quickly. And the boat scene, I remember in particular, you're staying on the boat with that monster and you're 
particularly helpless in that situation because you can't just run away and sort of like hide away or retreat for a moment or something like that. You're stuck on that boat and you've basically got no way to escape. You have to take it down. But yeah, as I was saying, you know, it was just interesting sort of looking back and sort of thinking, you know, what counts as a horror game? You know, also, it's interesting that the when you look at sort of horror games, survival horror is basically just the name of the genre at this point. You know, like when I think about it, aren't all games about surviving in a sense particularly you know game for you know being attacked and such aren't they all about surviving you know so shouldn't it just simply be called horror because survival just seems a very base sort of aspect of it it's like trying to t- uh, determine all games which include fighting as a fighting game which people have been trying to do with beat em ups for some reason they're not for some reason categorizing beat em ups as separate from fighting game and i've never understood that they're clearly different genres here but yeah it was just an interesting thing to look back and sort of speculate on, you know, what counts as a horror game. Going forward, I'm not sure what I'm going to be playing in terms of horror games. Like, Project Zero Maiden of Blackwater has opened my eyes to the possibility of enjoying horror games, but I'm wondering which ones I could actually look into, per se. Um, unfortunately, Until Dawn is a very interesting game, but it's also one that's best played through fresh eyes. Unfortunately, I watched the entire Scary Game Squad playthrough, thus ruining Until Dawn's horror aspect. Until Dawn, I will give credit to, is an amazing game for actually showcasing how a cinematic game can work. You know, it's basically what the Order 1886 set out to do, but hey, it's done right. The only problem then is that Until Dawn, being such a cinematic focused game, there's not really any replay value in it, uh, because the fear comes from what you don't know and finding out all of it. So, having actually watched it via Scary Game Squad, there's not really much reason for me to look into Until Dawn, but I will give it credit, credit where it's credit's due. Resident Evil 7 could appeal to me, but again, I've already watched the Scary Game Watch playthrough of it. That's like another reason I've got partially of an interest in horror games now. Scary Game Squad, um, really been enjoying their series. But the problem with Resident Evil 7 is that I'm not a fan of first person games. It's certainly a game I wouldn't mind, say, playing with Ruffy and Grim Brothers or something like that, but it's not something I'm going to go out of my way to get. So in terms of the future of me playing horror games, I think the main thing is uh, going for the Project Zero games, if any future ones come out, as well as past ones. The other way I'll probably be playing horror games is because of the fact that I'm collecting Wii games, and which I hope to eventually review one day, but for now it's mostly just building up a collection. Fragile Dreams, again whilst not listed on Wikipedia as a horror game, is something I would count as horror because of the fear it manages to install via its atmosphere and the apocalyptic surroundings in a very isolated setting. Um, I mean, heck, even the back of it says, Seto may be the last human alive. He buried his grandfather at the end of the summer. You know, even that alone, it's a great build-up of atmosphere, just from the blurb. But, you know, as I said, I'm collecting Wii games, and surprisingly, there's quite a few horror games on Wii. I'm not sure about many good ones. I've heard decent things about Silent Hill Shattered Memories, um, though not so much in the gameplay aspect, but in terms of the storytelling aspect. But at the same time, um... And I've heard there are some pretty awful horror games on Wii, but there's still an abundance of, for some reason, horror games on the Wii, including a remake of Project Zero 2, which I've actually, which is basically the main one I've been looking forward to because I want to try out the other Project Zero games. So, you know, I may end up playing more horror games in future. You know, it's not something that ever really had an interest in me before, unless I counted the horror thematic sort of games such as House of the Dead. Again, would you describe House of the Dead as a horror? I mean... You are in a position where you don't really have much control over your movement because you're on rails, and you're constantly being swarmed by enemies who are trying to, you know, tear your face apart. However, I think, you know, the best voice acting ever to be graced in any video game ever does kind of, you know, detract from some of the horror fear aspect of it. Um, but it's also a case, you know, how, how would you define horror is my question. You know, in terms of gaming, how would you define a horror game? Is it simply a fear aspect or simply... A thematic aspect is it you know simply having the right set pieces uh or is it a case where one genre rules outrules the other for instance project zero made in black water has elements that could put it with other uh, other genres in in a slight fashion so how resident evil as it's progressive couldn't be defined as an action game or a third person shoot action game to be more precise but when you look to some like the initial resident evil or the or project zero series as a whole and such and say the Silent hill series it's kind of hard to say anything called determine them as anything but horror. You know, that becomes the primary genre because the other genres aren't quite as defined in it. I guess that's one way I can see it. Like, the thing is, like, you know, uh, Silent Hill, uh, unless you call it survival, horror is its main sort of theme and its main sort of genre in terms of calling it a game. Project Zero, you could, none of the other genres really fit as well. 
So horror becomes the primary thing. Resident Evil, yeah, you can argue against it, particularly as particularly more and more it became an action game with layer entries. But from the first three games, it was horror first and foremost. That was because that was more prevalent. In House of the Dead, whilst I certainly could see horror being attributed to it, the rail shooting aspect obviously took precedence, particularly as it was an arcade game often played in the arcade. Though, of course, you may get a completely different experience playing at home. So then, uh, that's really all I've had to say. I'm now going to try out this tea. I've had it brewing for 15 minutes, as it recommended. I'm not usually, I don't think I'm usually a fan of chamomile, but this also has vanilla in it, which I do tend to like in my tea. So let's give it a shot. That's not actually that bad. It actually felt very nice touching my throat. The vanilla, I think, particularly helps. I can definitely detect the vanilla. The honey gives it a very a nice little sweet taste, but not overwhelmingly sweet. I think, interesting, I've let it cool down to the perfect point because it's not, you know, too hot, and obviously that means it's helping on my throat even more because it's not burning my throat away. I'm not a huge fan of the aftertaste coming on the tip of my tongue, but it's not, like, disgustingly bad. It's just a little bit too sweet of a taste than I tend to prefer on the tip of my tongue. But otherwise, the taste of it, and as well as the feeling of it going down my throat, is working out really well. So, as I said, once again, with the Soldin's perfectly sound medical advice, you know, chamomile, vanilla, and manuka honey tea is a good one to have. This is a Pucker brand one. Um, and it's, you know, seemingly helping my throat out quite a bit. I'll have to tell you more about it another tea time uh, to see how it has helped me out throughout the rest of the day. So, in case, this is my tea time on horror games. Really kind of a bit of a weird one because... I haven't played many horror games, but it's more like a case of, you know, what counts as a horror game and, you know, should I play more horror games? You know, is there a field of interest for me? I mean, in terms of the, you know, the, I think it's more of a case of finding ones which do appeal to me, but it's also a case of, you know, should I go out of my way to get them? Because, of course, there are so many games I want to play and there is such a big backlog to get through. In any case, I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to share your opinions. Feel free to share your thoughts on horror games, what you've played, what you're interested in horror games, and, of course, of the main topic of what constitutes as a horror game, specifically. Uh, for now, though, cheerio, everyone!